very easy to be an atheist when you're successful, but it's very difficult to be an atheist when you're laying on your deathbed because you begin to think, what if these people are right? When I'm laying on my deathbed and knowing that I'm going to die, I thought about what if Ron is right? What if there is a heaven and a hell? And so the most immediately, immediately, the most pressing thought in my mind is, how do I get saved? What is saved? As I'm laying there in bed, I would begin to fade away. And as I would fade away, I would begin to go down. It, now, it was like darkness. It was like, it was so, so dark. It was like the very darkness just penetrated into your very, very being. And I can tell you I left my body because I remember when I came back into my body. You know, I don't know where I was out of my body. Now, there are people that talk about the, the, a light. There are people that talk about floating above. There are people that talk about a feeling of warmth and love. I didn't feel any of that. I felt none of that. I felt untold terror. Untold terror. It, it appeared like the ambulance literally exploded in flames. I, I thought it had actually blown up. It filled with smoke. And immediately I was moving through that smoke as if through a tunnel. And after some period of time, coming out of the smoke and out of the darkness I began to hear the voices of a multitude of people screaming and groaning and crying but as I looked down the sensation was looking down upon a, a, a volcanic opening and seeing fire and smoke and, and people inside of this burning place screaming and crying they were burning but they weren't burning up. They weren't being consumed. But, but the most terrible part of it, I began to recognize many of the people that I was seeing in these flames. As if a close-up lens on a camera was bringing their faces close to me, I could, I could see their features and see the agony and the pain and the frustration. And a number of them began to call my name and said, Ronnie, don't come to this place. There's no way out. There's no escape. If you come here, there's no way out. And the smell was like a sulfur, like an electric welder. And the, the stench was, was terrible. I hear people calling me outside the room and they're saying to me in soft, gentle voices, Howard, you gotta come with us now. Come quickly, come out here. I left the room, which was real, clear, bright, and went into the hallway, which was dank and hazy and um, followed as people. First, they were so syrupy sweet to get me to go with them, and then when I was going along with them, it was like, hurry up, keep moving, you know, shut up, stop asking, but, you know, it started getting more um, ugly. And so we get into complete darkness. I'm absolutely terrified. These people are very hostile. I don't know where I am. I said, I'm not going to go with you any further. They said, you're almost there. And we start to fight. I just I was trying to get away from them. They were pushing and pulling at me. And um, there are now a lot of them. What originally had been like a handful, now was, since it was darkness, probably hundreds or thousands. I, don't, I, mean, I had no idea. What they wanted to do was they wanted to inflict pain on me because they derived satisfaction out of the pain that I experienced. The story of Kenneth Hagen's near-death experience is spectacular. My toes seemed to go numb. This numbness spread to my feet, my ankles, my knees, my hips, my stomach, my heart, and I leaped out of my body. I knew I was outside of my body. I could see my family in the room, but I couldn't contact them. As he tried to communicate,
communicate with his family members. He felt himself leaving the room and falling into what seemed to be a downward well or cavern. But as the darkness surrounded him, he was convinced that this hellish place was real. Hagen tells of calling out into the darkness. God, I belong to the church. I've been baptized in water. I was conscious of the fact that some kind of a creature met me at the bottom of that pit. I didn't look at it. My gaze was riveted on the gates. As the creature grabbed Hagen, he said, that place shook. It just trembled. Hagen remembers praying as he ascended towards her. Oh God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I want you to know it was like a two-ton weight lifted off my chest. <laughs>